and be relaxed. There are several daily living activities with which people may need assistance. In caring for eyeglasses and magnifiers, you may need to check and ensure on a regular basis that the glasses and magnifiers are clean. When they are not being used or worn, they should be in a case or in a safe place. Do not rest eyeglasses with the lenses down. When assisting someone with a meal or for an activity, the clock face can be a helpful method to describe where things are located. For example, your chicken is at 8 o'clock, peas at 4 o'clock, and your milk is next to the plate at about 10 o'clock. When doing this, it's important to remember that the person is located at the 6 o'clock position and everything should be presented from that reference point. You may assist patients or clients with reading. You may need to read menus, mail, or other written information about activities, procedures, or care. It's important to encourage independence at all times. Persons with a vision impairment or blindness are generally able to take care of themselves, but if assistance is needed, try to get the person as involved as possible. Encourage them to try things for themselves. In addition, there are several aids and appliances which can help your patients or clients be more independent. Many people listen to books on cassette tape using a special machine available from the talking book service. Signature guides are used to help the person stay on the line when signing their name. Other writing guides help a person write checks or address envelopes. Dark felt tip pens and bold line paper also help when writing. Many items can be marked in various ways to help the person identify them by touch. Rubber bands, tape, and raised dots are a few things used for labeling. Having talking or large print clocks and watches help people follow their daily schedule. There are many other aids and appliances available to help do a wide variety of tasks. Check with the resources listed in this section for more information. At this time, my colleague, Jerry Niedermeyer, will discuss orientation and mobility skills. I am Jerry Niedermeyer. I'm a certified orientation and mobility specialist at the Badger Station of the Blind Visually Impaired in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I have a master's degree in blind rehabilitation, orientation and mobility specialty, and I've been teaching orientation and mobility to uh, clients and individuals for over 25 years. What is orientation and mobility? Orientation and mobility means knowing where you are in the environment at all times and being able to get there safely and efficiently. In other words, we want your patients to get where they want to go and back without getting lost or sustaining injury and to get there on time. There are some orientation and mobility techniques which you may be able to use when working with your patients who are visually impaired or blind. The first is what we call sighted guide. A sighted guide is a person who has sight and walks with a patient with vision impairment or blindness and takes them where they need to go. Here's how we start sighted guide. Have the patient gently grab your arm slightly above the elbow the patient then places himself or herself one half step behind you. You then walk forward with your patient. How fast you walk will depend on how fast your patient can walk. And don't be afraid to walk with your patient and describe activities and happenings occurring around them. Let them know when you are approaching a ramp or even a curbing if you're outside and going to a store or a doctor's appointment, etc. Walking through narrow spaces. 
There will be occasions such as in a crowded dining room when your patient can't walk next to you because of a narrow space. You tell your patient there is a narrow space coming up and place the arm your patient is grasping behind your back. You then instruct your patient to get directly behind you and to straighten the arm they are holding onto you with all the way out. This will prevent them from stepping on your heels as you walk. You are now leading the way through the narrow space for your patient. When you are through the narrow space, simply let your arm drop to the regular position and continue on walking. Stair travel. Stairs are always dangerous. It is very important to make sure you always talk to your patient and let them know when you are going to use a stairway or even a single step, including a curb. So always talk to your patient when you're walking with them and describe their surroundings, especially if they're in un un any unfamiliar areas. For both going up and down stairs, it's important to you as the guide to stop briefly at the first step and let them know if it is a stairway going up or down. Your patient will be right next to you. You then take the first step and proceed at a pace your patient takes. When you reach the landing, let them know you are on the landing and that they have just one more step to take. Seating. When you have reached your destination with your patient, they may need to sit down. When you reach the seat, you can reach across your body with your free hand and gently grab the hand that they are using to hold onto your elbow with and then place their hand on the back of the chair so they will know where the chair is. You can then assist them in pulling the chair out so they can position themselves to sit down. Before they sit down, however, have them sweep the seat with one of their hands to make sure there is nothing on the seat, such as a spill or a book. For couches, it's best to have your patient contact the front of the couch with the front of their lower leg so they know where it is. They can then turn and sit down on the couch, but first have them check the seat again to make sure they aren't sitting down on anything. When you and your patient are walking in the standard sighted guide position, you tell your patient, we need to turn around and go back the other way. To facilitate that, you have your patient turn towards you. You both turn towards each other, and then you have your patient grab the other arm for the sighted guide, guide technique. And this way you're not taking up a large area as you make your turn, just the area that you're standing in, then you, then you continue on your way. Protective techniques. The upper hand and forearm technique is used when your patient needs to protect their upper body from things like partially closed doors, the edges of doorways, a tall laundry cart, other patients, or even staff. We ask the patient to place either arm at chest level with their elbow bent at a right angle with the fingertips extending to their opposite arm. This will protect their entire upper body as they walk. Generally, we use this for small and familiar areas. The lower hand and forearm technique is used when your patient needs to protect their groin and stomach areas from such things as dining room table corners or other objects at waist high level. Have the patient place either arm downward and across the abdominal area with the hand extended down to the groin area. And your patients can use both techniques at the same time whenever they feel the need to be extra careful. The next technique we use is called trailing. We use trailing when we want patients to walk to a destination by just following the wall to get there. We have them stand 